Waterbox aquariums are relatively new to the UK, but there are some really cool features you should know about, as well as some noteworthy flaws. So in this video, I'll give you an overview of all the good and bad things you should know about before you buy. Now, this isn't a sponsored video. I bought the tank myself and I have no affiliation with Waterbox. And while my tank is the Frag 55.2, I've checked the specs of all Waterbox tanks to make sure I'm covering all bases. And if you're new here and want a weekly dose of reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. I'll start with the sump area because that's where most of the nice features are. First off, it comes with a gate valve as standard on the downpipe. For the uninitiated, the valve on the downpipe is how you control the water level in your weir box. You want the level to be above your main drain and below your emergency drain. That then gives you a backup in case the main drain gets clogged, and it's also what silences the water noise. And a gate valve is the most accurate way to control all of that as it lets you make tiny adjustments. Coupled with that, there's a good difference in height between the main drain and the emergency drain, which gives you a good amount of margin for error when you make your adjustments. And all of the pipes have unions, which makes it easier to remove them for cleaning, so the plumbing gets five stars. Related to that is the hose it comes with for the return pump. Firstly, it's black, which looks nice and neat, but more to the point, it's made of silicon. Now, silicon is the gold standard for return pump hoses because it absorbs vibrations in a way that other return pump hoses don't, which will, of course, reduce any buzzing noise from your return pump. It's a small thing, but it makes a big difference, and I really applaud Waterbox for including this. Lastly, on the downstairs plumbing, this particular tank comes set up for a manifold, which means you can simply attach extra outlets to your return pipe and run filters like a phosphate reactor or an algae reactor off the main return pump. And that saves you having to buy separate pumps for the filters and having to find space for extra plug sockets. Although it's worth noting they've changed the design of this tank and this feature seems to be only available on water box tanks of 5 feet or longer. The good news continues upstairs where you have twin outlets for the return pump, which means the flow from your return pump is more evenly distributed so your sound bed won't blow around as much. And it comes with a choice of duckbill outlets or random flow generators, which, as the name suggests, help create a more random flow pattern. Number five is that it comes with a triple hinged cabinet. The cabinet doors on these tanks are quite heavy, so having the extra support and strength is a welcome addition. It also makes it easier to line up the door straight, and it feels really nice and solid when you open and close the door. As well as that, there are some nice finishing touches to the tank. The cabinet has a classy looking brushed metal water box logo, and there's another water box logo embedded in the glass at the top of the aquarium. And rounding things off, the lid for the weir box is made of glass, which looks and feels great, and it has rubberized edges to hold it firmly in place. Now at this point you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned the glass of the aquarium or the rest of the cabinet. Well, it's not because they're bad, in fact the cabinet is solid and the glass is clear enough, but that's the case with all modern aquariums these days, so I don't count them as particularly good or particularly bad, they're just fine. So with the good stuff out of the way, here are six things I don't like. First and foremost is that these sumps are not refugium ready. There's a filter sock section on the left, then a skimmer in the middle, then two smaller sections, one for your freshwater reservoir and one for your return pump on the right. So if you want to run an algae refugium, you'll need to get creative and fit some kind of baffle in the skimmer section with a dedicated weir comb to stop algae escaping and clogging your skimmer and return pump. In fact, you only get a refugium ready sump on water box tanks of five feet or longer, which is a real shame as refugiums are really popular on three and four foot tanks. Next is that the filter sock section is fixed in place, which is fine if you like filter socks, but if not, you lose a lot of space for no benefit. And removing the filter sock section is a total pain in the behind, as I found out firsthand. And with more and more people preferring automatic filter rollers, I wish aquarium companies would offer a removable filter sock section. And while the manifold is a good option, having it running off the return pump isn't ideal. If you adjust the amount of flow for, say, a phosphate reactor, that will have a knock-on effect on your return line. So you'll need to adjust the gate valve again. And things like Roafoss and activated carbon clog over time, which will again direct more flow through the return line, which will again have you reaching for the gate valve. So it would be better, in my opinion, to have a manifold that runs off a designated pump, and I personally won't be making use of the built-in manifold. 
And while it's nice to have the option of random flow generators or RFGs, these are not proper RFGs. A true RFG has additional inlets at the base of the nozzle to suck water in from your tank, whereas these don't have that, so the desired effect is reduced. The weir combs are also fixed in place, not removable, so when they clog with algae, which they inevitably will, you can't simply pop them out and clean them in citric acid. Instead, you'll have to scrub them in situ, which will involve more elbow grease and will release all sorts of crap into your tank. And while the glass and cabinet are generally very good quality, I did find a few imperfections on both. The silicon work is fine, but looks a little shoddy in places to my eye, and there are imperfections here on the bottom corner of my glass, which looks a little rough, and also on the inside of the cabinet door, which do make it feel a tiny little bit cheap. Although to be fair, I am nitpicking a little here, and I'm applying a high standard because it's fair to say they're not especially cheap tanks. Now it's early days, but overall I'm really impressed with my first water box, despite the few setbacks. The plumbing is absolutely top notch, the triple hinge cabinet door feels really solid, and it's a really nice looking tank. The frustrations I have with the sump can all be rectified, and while there are certainly things I'd like to see improved, for me, none of them are deal breakers, and I wouldn't hesitate in recommending waterbox tanks. As many of you know, I also have a Red Sea Reefer as my main aquarium, so once I've had the waterbox for a few months, I'll come back and do a full comparison between the two brands, so make sure you're subscribed for that, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next week.